Please welcome the First Lady, Catherine Helga Spurgum. Thank you, sweetie. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I am so filled with gratitude. You know, every day, uh, even more so on a day like today when we can all get together and focus on this topic that's just so important to all of us. I do have to point out that, you know, although I was a part of that recovery out loud thing, I did not do any singing. I'm just gonna point that out right now, but that's a goal maybe for next year. But anyway, um, so thank you again, uh, everyone, for being here. Over four years ago, on a frigid February day in North Dakota, the sun was piercing through the windows at the governor's residence. And my mind was racing over what I should tell the reporter in my first ever interview as First Lady of North Dakota. Do I talk about how busy my life has become? or what it's like living in the public eye, or maybe how hard it was to find first lady hashtags to use on my social media, LOL. <laughs> and then I was suddenly hit with a vivid moment of clarity. I need to talk publicly about it. With five minutes to go before the interview, I knew there was no turning back. So I went to my husband, Doug, and I told him, I'm ready to talk about it. His eyes lit up with excitement and surprise, the way it would for anyone who has become your number one champion in life. So fast forward to the moment the reporter asked the fateful question. You share that your platform is eliminating the stigma <clears throat> surrounding addiction. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's an interesting initiative for a first lady. Why are you so passionate about this? I took a deep breath, and with a quiet assurance that I was doing this for all the right reasons, and that maybe my story could help one person, <laughs> I said, I'm very passionate about this because it affects me personally. I've been in recovery from alcohol addiction for over 15 years. Thank you. <laughs> In that moment, it felt like a 100-pound weight had been lifted off my shoulders. 15 years of silence and shame, of wondering if I could ever talk publicly about this, had disappeared. Since that day in February of 2017, I've told my addiction struggle and recovery story a lot. <clears throat> from small community gatherings in Harvey, North Dakota, to TEDx, to the East Room of the White House. I talk about my addiction starting when I was a teen because of undiagnosed anxiety and depression, which was complicated <clears throat> by my Scandinavian heritage, you know, about, you know, where we didn't talk about feelings or problems. Everything was always fine. Many of you in the, in the room and online can probably relate if you're Scandinavian. We're basically descendants of Vikings. Our ancestors were brave traders, explorers, and warriors. And we didn't sit around the dinner table and talk about our feelings or our problems. I talk about how alcohol started as my solution to the pain and emptiness. But then it led me down a path of 22 miserable years of drunken episodes, strained relationships, and hopelessness. I emphasize that the road to recovery is almost never a smoothly paved road. It's lined with potholes and cracks. My road was filled with eight years of relapses and hopelessness until I found a meaningful connection with a team leader at work. After hearing my emotional story of my addiction struggles and of my need to go to treatment, my team leader said, okay, let's do this. She broke down the walls of shame and stigma 
and connected, me, connected with me as a human who was struggling. She showed me empathy and sympathy. I believe it's because of this team leader that I had the courage to start my recovery journey. And I am standing here today, now, as a person with over 19 years of recovery. <clears throat> Thank you. Whether you're hearing my story today for the first time or for the 12th time, I share my story because storytelling ends stigma and can save lives. Everyone has a story. Whether you're on your own recovery journey or you have a family member or friend who is battling addiction, or you are a community member or coworker who wants to learn more, all of you have a story to tell. I believe there are two things that need to come together when someone uses their story to affect positive change, to eliminate stigma, and to open the doors to connect with others. Those two things are courage and opportunity. Courage is important because being vulnerable and talking about the most painful parts of your life is incredibly difficult. It took me 15 years to have the courage to share my story. And I found that courage after listening to a dear friend and mentor, William Moyers. He said, the quickest and best way for anyone to eliminate the stigma of addiction is through storytelling. Talk about how addiction has impacted lives and most importantly, to stand up and be a face and voice of recovery. Sometimes the most important courage is the courage we empower in others. I do not know if I would have found the courage within myself if not for hearing William's call to action through storytelling. All of you can create change by finding courage within yourselves and supporting others to take those hugely important first steps. And in addition to courage, the second thing you need is opportunity. As I stand here today, I know not everyone will share their story in a newspaper, at a TED Talk, or in the White House, but everyone can create opportunities for themselves and others to share their stories. Every day in your lives, you can find opportunities to talk about your recovery or how someone you know has struggled with addiction or how addiction has impacted your life. Whether it's at work, on social media, where you volunteer, on your sports teams, at your kids' activities, where you exercise, in your book club, in an Uber, <laughs> or where you worship. There are many opportunities every day to normalize discussions around the disease of addiction. And you can invite others into these conversations. You can intentionally create space every day for people to tell their stories about addiction and recovery. You will all learn later today that storytelling is a scientifically based intervention strategy that reduces stigma and creates more understanding. We have chosen to walk the talk today and put words into action. You will have the opportunity to hear several North Dakotans from all walks of life share how addiction has impacted their lives, how they found recovery or empowered it in someone else. The faces and voices of recovery in our state and around the, wor the world are diverse. So when possible, seek to lift up these voices in your workplace and in your community to eliminate stigma and show people that recovery is possible. In the past, I have challenged audiences to talk about addiction like you would any other disease and to share your stories. Today, I'm challenging all of you to do more and go further in reducing stigma and creating connections. 
Be courageous and tell your own story. But take it one more step further by creating space for at least one other person to share their story in some way. And that can look like a number of different things. You could invite people to serve, people in recovery to serve on your boards or on leadership committees. Hire people in recovery and have them share their story at work. Have a person in recovery share their story at a local event. Or lift up the examples of recovery of people in your life. If you're part of a business network or a business group, create space for the topic of addiction and recovery to be addressed. Invite speakers to share their stories. Invite treatment centers to talk about their services and how they can help people. Invite addiction counselors to share how team leaders, managers, and coworkers can approach someone that they think is struggling with issues at work. If you own a business, create opportunities for conversations around addiction and recovery. Have behavioral health specialists speak at, to your teams about mental health issues and addiction. Invite peer support specialists to come to the place of your business and talk about their recovery stories and how they can help other people on their road to recovery. This all takes leadership courage. This all takes courage because these topics are not easily discussed. Not as, as easily discussed as the latest business podcast or as a marketing strategy. But you can use your leadership courage to lead your teams to places where they may have never been, but where they need to go to create supportive cultures where people spend most of their time at work. And you'll hear other people today about the importance of building recovery supportive workplaces. Your stories are power. Intentionally creating space for someone else to tell their story, perhaps for the first time, is even more powerful. So let's move forward by instilling courage in others, creating opportunities to share our stories, and creating a plus one culture where you create a force multiplier where the change doesn't end with you. Recovery Reinvented is much bigger, bigger than the governor and me. It is bigger than our state behavioral health team or the countless organizations and service providers on the front lines who make recovery possible. Recovery Reinvented is for everyone who dreams of a world where addiction is treated and addressed like the disease it is, who offer hope that people can and do recover and who act to end stigma and prove the lies of everyone around them. I am so grateful for the opportunity to serve the great, play, great state of North Dakota as First Lady. But I am even more grateful to just be Catherine, a face and voice of recovery. Thank you so much. Thank you.